Hi, welcome to the third and final part of building a context list using Postgres and Vue.js. So far, we've created our database, configured Postgres to serve an API, and also built a website using Vue.js that connects to this API, fetches the contacts, and displays them on the page. In this video, we will deploy all of this to production. I'll start with a quick overview of how we're going to achieve that. First, we'll take care of the API path issue that I mentioned in my last video. Then, we're going to create a droplet and connect the domain name to it. On that droplet, we'll install Postgres and a production copy of our Vue.js app. Then, we're going to install a web server that will serve our API and website with HTTPS. Alright, let's get started. First, let's take care of this API URL. The problem with this is that it works on development, but when we deploy our app to production, the API will not be served on this path. So we need an easy way to configure different values for the API path in development and production. The way we're going to do that is extract it into its own variable, and then we can fill in the value of this variable depending on the environment that our app is running in. The Vue CLI package that we initially used to build our app provides a very easy way to do this. All we need to do is create a .env file in our project root and in it we can define any variables that we want. Although there is a catch, we have to prefix all of their names with view underscore app. So we'll define view underscore app underscore API base and we'll set it to localhost at port 3000. This is for development. And for production, we can create a new file called .env.production. And in this file, we can override any development values with different ones that will be used for production only. So we'll set the API base to slash API. And once we deploy our app to production, this is where the API will be hosted on the same domain under slash API. Now that we've created these variables, let's use them in our app. You can use these variables as you would any environment variables in Node.js. So we can define API base as process and view app API base. And because the development server runs as a Node.js program, this value will be available. And once we build their app to production, it will actually be turned into a constant string with the value that we set in our .env.production file. Now let's replace this with the variable that we created. And for the changes to take effect, we need to restart the development server. So I'll go back here, exit and run it again. Now it'll pick up the new environment variable, and if we reload, it should work. Great, this is all done. Now let's create a droplet and deploy everything to it. I'll go back to my control panel and click create and then droplets. Go with Ubuntu 1804. The smallest plan is fine. And we'll select the same data center as our database cluster. We'll choose the same VPC network as well. And I'll add my SSH key for the name I'll go with contacts.chart.fyi. This is my domain name. I'll copy the IP address and I'll go to my domain name and add a DNS record to connect the contact subdomain to the new droplet. Enter the IP here and I'll set a low TTL so I don't have to wait a long time if I make any mistakes while recording this video. Now we should be able to log into our droplet. We can stop the development server now and Let's SSH in as root to our new droplet. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new system user to work with so that I'm not using root all of the time. So I'll type in add user, name it Sammy, enter a password, you can leave all of these empty, and we'll need to give it sudo access, so we'll use the user mod command to add it to the sudo group. Then I'll copy my SSH key to it so that I can log in with it. And finally, we'll change the ownership of the SSH directory to the user itself. Cool, I should be able to log in with it now. I'm in, let's make sure sudo works. Awesome, now I'm going to update the app cache in order to get the latest packages. Before we can even run the Postgres binary, we need to install the PostgreSQL library. And now I can go back and grab the binary for Postgres. And this is the same process that we did when we installed Postgres on our local machine. Find the operating system, copy, download the archive, you can extract it, 
and to make sure it works run it without any options and it prints the config file which means that it works now it's in my home directory so i'm going to move it to user bin i'll start with updating the permissions so we'll change ownership to root update the permissions and move it to user bin now i should be able to run it again and it works that's awesome now i'm going to create a directory to hold everything that's related to our contacts app i like to use slash srv but you can really place this anywhere so i'll create a new directory called contacts app change ownership to sammy and i'll start with the postgres config file so I'll go back to my local machine here and I'll copy the contents of the config file. Now on my droplet, I can create a new file based on the contents. Now we're going to want to make a few changes to this. First, we're going to configure Postgres to listen on localhost only so that it can't be accessed from outside of the droplet. So we'll set server host to localhost. And because our database and droplet are in the same VPC in the same data center, we can use the private network to communicate. So I'll go back to my database in my control panel and get the host name for the private network and in the connection URI I can just replace the host name with the private one. Now remember we set our password to contact and I don't really like that so let's change it. First I'm going to generate a random password so I'll use the pwgen command to generate a 32 character long password. Then I'll go and copy the connection details for the public network because I'm running this on my local machine. Now I'm going to connect to my database. I prefix the command with env here because I'm using fish shell. But if you're using bash or zish, you can just use it as is. Now I'm going to copy this password and to change the user's password, I'll type in alter user postgres with password and paste in the new password. Go back into the config file and change the password from contacts to a more secure password. And I can save the file. Let's test that everything works. So I'll run Postgres, pass it the config file and use ampersand to run it in the background. Now I can run curl localhost at 3000 slash contacts and I get my contacts so everything works. Now I can exit Postgres. So I'll run FG to bring it back to the foreground and close it using control C. Now let's create a system service for Postgres. We'll go back to Postgres documentation. Under administration, there's a demonizing category and there's an example systemd config file. So I can just copy the contents. Now I can create the service file. So I'll create it in slash etsy systemd system postgres.service. Paste in the contents, update the path here. And the config file is in SRV contacts app postgres.conf. And we'll configure it to run as no body and no group because it doesn't need any special permissions. Now I can reload systemd to pick up the new file and try to start it. So start postgres, get a status, and it looks like it works. Let's double check for localhost 3000 contacts. Awesome. Now we're all done with Postgres. Let's copy over our Vue.js app. In my local machine, I'll go to my Vue app and I can run npm run build. And this will build a production ready optimized version of my Vue.js app. Now I have this directory with the production build. So I can copy it over to my droplet. Use SCP, copy dist, send me at my droplet's IP address and copy things to SRV contacts app view. Let's make sure everything made it. Great. Now we need to install a web server to serve these files. For this, we'll use Nginx. So we'll install Nginx using app. And I'll configure my domain name. So I'll create a virtual host in sites available and call it contacts.chart.fyi. Server name is our domain name, so contacts.chart. FYI again, and the root is SRV contacts app view. So let's save it. We'll create a link from sites available to sites enabled, and we can restart or reload Nginx. And now, if I browse to it, I get my app. 
We do get an error though, and this is because we haven't set up our API server. If you look at the actual error, you can see that it's trying to load slash API slash contacts, which means our production API path was set correctly. To take care of this, we need to use Nginx to proxy slash API to the Postgres instance that's running on our droplet. The Postgres documentation also talks about this. So under hardening Postgres, there's an example config here. So I can just copy it and paste it to my nginx config file. Instead of using the upstream directives, we'll just fill in the hostname directly. So localhost 3000. Let's reload nginx again, go back and reload. And now we've got everything running under contacts.chart.fyi. nginx is serving the view app and the API is available under API. So like we did before, we can look up a specific contact, let's say ID two this time, and we get it. Awesome, we're almost done here. The only thing that is left is to configure HTTPS. For that, we will use Let's Encrypt and we'll really be following this tutorial. So first we'll start with installing the certbot command. So we'll copy the app repository And then we can install the certbot package. Certbot has a built-in Nginx plugin. So to set up HTTPS, all we need to do is run certbot nginx d contacts.chart.fyi. We'll need to enter a email address. We'll use mine. Agree to the terms of service. I don't want to share my email address right now. And it's going to fetch the certificate from Let's Encrypt. We do want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. And that's really all there is to it. If we go back now and reload, we've got HTTPS. Awesome. This marks the end of this tutorial series. To summarize, we explored creating a PostgreSQL database, importing data into it, using Postgres to set up an API, and we wrote to a website using Vue.js. And then we deployed all of that to production on a droplet with HTTPS. I hope this has been educational or helpful to you. If you have any comments or feedback or thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments.